Wow. So t very abrupt, but um, hi. <laughs> I um accidentally put my scene transition to cut instead of fade. My bad. That's on me. But hi, welcome. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? It's not morning for me. It is kind of morning for me. I woke up a couple of hours ago. I don't know why I have so much energy right now. I'm going to crash so bad. I just know it. I, I really am going to crash. But I have tea. I have book. I'm excited to read. Something is wrong with me. Mentally, physically, emotionally. The chemicals aren't working. But <laughs> um, yeah, this is what's happening, and I can't explain it. It's just what's happening. So that's what we're dealing with today. I hope we can get further in this book than maybe last time. Maybe if I have energy, I will be able to read more. But that all depends on my throat. I have tea. Hope you have tea too. It is a good time. Good morning. Good evening. Good, a uh, good day. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, something is wrong with me today. <laughs> something is actually so wrong with me. But you know what? We're we're living. We're doing it. I don't know. We're. This is just. It is what it is. Is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, let's read. Oh my god, let's read. We have, uh, we've gotten about halfway through, a little bit less than halfway through, maybe, depending, yeah, about a little less than halfway through. We are on chapter 20. Actually, let me see how many chapters there are in total. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many chapters. Oh, there's 38 chapters. So yeah, we're pretty much halfway through. There's 38 chapters. We're in chapter 20. We have 18 chapters left. Is that math? I believe that is math. Yes. Hopefully we'll get through seven chapters today. I'm kidding. We only usually get through like three or four. So. Mmm. Tea. Are you okay? Sorry, I just had to ask. I just, you might notice some things that are different with, um, my stream. I'm currently trying to set things up slowly. Very slowly. Very, very slowly. <laughs> um, for my 2.0 debut. Woohoo! So I don't, like, get bombarded with, like, 50 things I have to do right before the day. But yeah, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. What happened last time we left off? Um, last time, they thought that he died. No, they found the fake fish in the tank. And, uh, Prince Jing was like, ooh, Angie. And then we got a glimpse of Liu, Liu's human form. About him putting on Prince Jing's clothes <laughs> and then heading out down t down the mountain that's what happened last time i am so excited about sorry about these next couple of chapters i hope i can get through them ah, this is, do, 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 do. sorry this an illustration of this chapter is so cute oh my god chapter 21 is called fish selling himself Let's read. <laughs> Chapter 20, A Fleeting Glance. <clears throat> I haven't warmed up my voice. I mean, I have. I've been awake, but I don't know how good reading will be today. Let's find out together. Perhaps Liu had been a fish for too long and was too used to the swishing motions of swimming, but it was a little harder than he expected to control his hind legs. I forgot to put up this thing. Okay, should be good. At first, it felt like he was floating rather than walking. He went and he kept stumbling. 
but this feeling didn't persist for very long, and he soon got used to it. Because he didn't have suitable shoes, his feet were bare. Luckily, the weather was warm, so he couldn't feel so he didn't feel cold. Prince Jing's manner was very was kept very clean, and by paying attention to the ground beneath his feet, he managed to avoid getting into any accidents after he made his way out of the ornamental mountain. But with bare feet and only inner robes, he was a terrible eyesore. That was also why the servants who ran into the unfamiliar Liu didn't dare approach and question him. Prince Jing was hosting a banquet today. The manor was filled with guests, all of whom were nobility or, or aristoc aristocracy. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Uh, no, wait, aristocracy. No, I do know how to pronounce that word. Yippee! <laughs> or our aristocracy. I am going to trip up every time. And would need an invitation to enter. There were guards keeping watch outside the manor too, so there wouldn't be strangers and wandering. So there wouldn't be strangers wandering within the manor walls. Someone bold enough to dress like this was probably some lord's son acting out. And I'm just sorry. I'm I'm just I haven't properly um organized myself, so that's what I'm doing now. Because I, I'm never prepared. And I love it. Hmm. But this also wasn't appropriate to just let him... What? But this also wasn't... But it also wasn't appropriate to just let this lord wander around like this. Someone had already dashed off to retrieve Wang Gong Gong so he could take care of it. Other people followed Liu from a distance. A kind auntie's servant saw Liu walking barefoot and couldn't bear to watch any longer. She came up to him and asked in a gentle voice, Which family are you from? Why are you dressed like this? <coughs> Having heard Wang Ji talk quite a lot, Liu didn't have any problem speaking to other people in ancient times. He replied vaguely, Ma'am, I... I'm here as a guest. I got lost. He thought he had everything down pat when he had been planning this all out, but complications kept cropping up. First, he had neither clothes nor shoes. Then, after he figured that out, he thought the kitchens would be easy to find. Uh oh Except Prince Jing's manor was way too big. He was too afraid to ask for directions and was starting to get frustrated and anxious. It had already been hard enough to find his way out of the ornamental mountain. <clears throat> the auntie could see this young man's face was clean, delicate, <laughs> delicate and likable. His dark eyes were exceptionally spirited, looking like a pair of black beads submerged in mercury. Eee, he's so cute! <laughs> she couldn't help the fondness flooding her heart. If the little lord is lost, how about I take you to see Wang Gong Gong? said the auntie. There was no way he could come face to face with Wang Ji. No need, he said hurriedly. hurriedly. Wang Gong Gong must be at Ninghui, Ninghui Hall right now. I'll be able to find my way back. But, Auntie, do you know where the kitchens are? He rubbed his stomach, red-faced. The Auntie immediately understood and chuckled. Is this little lord hungry? If you think me trustworthy, please follow me. The Auntie was wearing what the servants at the prince's manor wore, and she had an apron on. Liu implicitly trusted Prince Jing's servant, so he followed the Auntie into the kitchens. Liu talked with her the whole way there and found out the auntie was a cook in Prince Jing's kitchens. Liu felt like he had hit the jackpot. There was no way he was going to go hungry with a cook leading the way. The auntie's last name was Zhu. Okay, that was really random. <laughs> when the two arrived at the kitchens, Liu's eyes nearly fell out of their sockets. Here at last were the dishes that he had been dreaming about day in and day out. Auntie Zhu brought out a plate with a smile and asked Liu what he liked to eat. Oh, cute! Liu stared at the food. I am crying for him. I Call me an empath, but boy, if I was a fish and all I ever wanted to do was eat, and then a nice lady was like, okay, what would you like to eat? And, oh my god! Liu stared at the food, drooling, and listened and listed out a whole bunch of dishes shamelessly. 
Auntie Zhu picked out a few pi- f- uh, bruh, picked out a few based on his preferences and carried over two whole plates along with a wooden bowl packed full of steaming white rice on a tray. These dishes have already been brought out to the masters, so they won't need them any more. These are all extras, and no one's touched them yet. Please eat as much as you want. <clears throat> this was the first time anyone had been so kind to him since he turned back into a human. The thick steam rising from the food made his eyes water. He, thank- he thanked Auntie Zhu, accepted the bowl, and began wolfing it down. The unique taste of human food bloomed on the tip of his tongue, making him feel like his time as a fish had been nothing but a dream, and yet... Staring down at his bare feet, he remembered the medicine was just a temporary fix. Very soon, he would turn back into a fish. Auntie Zhu saw he was inhaling the food, as though he hadn't been fed in several days, and urged him to slow down in case he choked. Liu smiled, but didn't explain. "'Little lord, why are you alone?' Auntie Zhu asked hesitantly. The youth before her was about the same age as her younger son, and she couldn't help but feel concerned. Oh, my book! I forgot about my book. Book. Wrong book. Book. Wrong book. Right book. (laughs) There we go. Her words brought his worries back to mind, but he couldn't mention Prince Jing outright, so he replied, "My, My master is about to get married. He won't have time for me anymore, so I came out for a stroll. This bitch. God, he's so stupid and I love him. Auntie Zhu paused. Master? Married? Was this youth the male concubine of some noble? No wonder he had run out in such a rumpled state. He had probably been tossed out by the future wife and gone hungry for some time. Auntie Zhu's imagination conjured up a whole scene of of the D-wife dealing with the (laughs) side-wife. Liu made it sound pitiful, but she didn't look down on him. On the contrary, she patted his hand kindly and comforted him. Don't worry, stay here for a little longer and eat some more. But he couldn't continue walking around in just his inner robes. After taking a quick glance at Liu's size, Auntie Zhu pulled out a set of her younger son's clean robes and a pair of clo- clothes, uh, cloth shoes. The robes were a jade green. I have got to remember that when I make fan art. <laughs> the robes were a jade green. The same color as the seaweed that Liu liked. God, oh yeah. Liu had just been worrying about what to do with his clothes and shoes, and he was delighted by this turn of events. He briefly considered discarding what he wore already as he changed, but in the end he decided to continue wearing Prince Jing's inner robes and underwear. Kinky motherfucker. (laughs) What the fuck? Auntie Zhu probably thought Liu would feel awkward if she probed any further, so she didn't continue asking. Finally getting at the chance to indulge in human food, Liu only very reluctantly put down his chopsticks when there was a slight bulge rounding his stomach. After he finished, he followed Auntie Zhu around in the kitchens, using it as an opportunity to to digest the food he just ate, a habit he'd picked up from being in Prince Jing's care and maintained even as a human. Stupid the ancient kitchen was bustling with activity the assortment of knives and cutting boards caught liu's attention but he knew the look only with his eyes what but he knew to look only with his eyes and to keep his hands to himself so the cooks didn't get mad he also noticed a fish basket and remembered the noble consort's thousand carp soup from when he first transmigrated he asked curiously Auntie, are you going to make a thousand carp soup too? Auntie Zhu laughed. That's a dish for a birthday for birthday banquets in the palace. The prince's manor doesn't have such customs. His highness did have fish soup often in the past. But he's stopped now. Yoy God, just get a room. Ugh. As Auntie Zhu spoke, it seemed... Ugh, spoke. Sorry, there's something in my eyes distracting me. (laughs) As Auntie Zhu... What? Where did I go? 
Oh, okay. As Auntie Ju spoke, it seemed more and more that she was talking to herself. But Liu heard and thought, Is that because of me? After all, Prince Jing really did dote on him. As he thought about all the different ways Prince Jing was good to him, Liu couldn't help feeling a little sad. Auntie Ju smiled as she asked him, Did you ask about fish soup because you wanted some? Uh oh. Liu shook his head emphatically. Why would he, a fish, drink fish soup? Please no. He changed the subject and asked Auntie Ju where the opera stage had been set up. According to his plan, after eating and enjoying a little opera, he should be heading back. He had already lost a substantial amount of time due to the issue of the clothing of the clothes and getting lost. And he didn't know how much longer he had. Auntie Ju informed him that the stage was in the Ya Yin Garden near Ninghui Hall. Ninghui? Ninghui? He? Hai? I have no idea. I'm just guessing and I'm probably gonna go, um, like, alternate between the two. <laughs> Liu made a hurry. What? Liu made to hurry there, but he caught a glimpse of a few bamboo boxes just before he left. These bamboo boxes looked familiar to Liu. Auntie Ju generously opened a few to show him. This is the fish food his highness asked for specifically. There are many kinds, though it's not anything rare. For some reason, Liu's nose started to sti sting. Aww. As if he was about to cry. <laughs> he pointed at the box holding the red fish food. Can I take some? <laughs> God. Auntie Ju said, Of course, the kitchens have plenty, so we won't run out. But this is for fish. Are you sure you want some? Liu nodded. Y yes Auntie Ju packed up half a box for him, assuming he also had a fish. Liu stuffed it into his sleeve the way people in ancient times did. Then he thanked Auntie Ju and headed towards ya Yayin Garden. As he passed Ninghui Hall, he definitely had to hold himself back from peeking in. Liu thought warily. <clears throat> At this time, the main characters, top and bottom, were meeting. I, that's insane. That's an insane phrase to say. Oh my god. It had nothing to do with him, and there was no need for a fish to do anything. He steadfastly avoided looking in the direction of Ninghua Hall. At Yayin Garden, he could hear the sounds of the opera and the distance, but the guards outside Yayin Garden stopped him and asked to see his identification. Oh no, Liu thought. No one had checked him in the kitchens. Why did he need to be checked at the opera? Opera. Besides, where was he supposed to get such a thing? It hadn't occurred to Liu that, because he was wearing Auntie Ju's son's old robes and cloth, cloth shoes, he looked like a servant. The manners rules stated that ordinary star servants were not permitted in Yayin Garden, which was why the, garden, the guard stopped him. Which was why... Bad Gal Beach, thanks for following. Welcome. I should not be interrupting this book, <laughs> but I just did. But uh, welcome. I hope you have a good time. Um, da -da 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 this is why I should not interrupt myself. <laughs> okay, Liu didn't dare argue with the guards. He didn't have much time left. He didn't need to watch the opera. And if he wasn't welcome here, then there were other places he, where he could visit. Liu decided to go somewhere else, but as soon as he turned around, he came face to face with the familiar figure. Wasn't that Wang Xi Gong Gong? Liu barely had time to open his mouth to greet him when Wang Ji waved his hand and all the nearby guards surrounded Liu. Capture this person! Wang Ji was still panting. It was clear he had been running for a while. Just a few minutes ago, he had been scouring the garden with Prince Jing. He hadn't paid much mind to the news traveling around. Oh, because they think he's the one that stole the fish. Okay, well... That is, until he heard a servant say that there was a young lord dressed in only inner robes, wandering around the manor. The more Wang Ji thought about it, the more likely he thought that this was the thief who stole Prince Jing's clothes. He pondered further. The clothes had gone missing together with the fish. That meant the person who stole the fit 
stole the clothes was the thief who stole the fish. He immediately alerted Prince Jing, sending someone to fetch him so he could take a look. Liu was shocked at seeing Wang Ji stop him. There was no way all of his arrangements in Prince Jing's room had been found out that quickly. Then he remembered he was now human. He had to be careful he had to be careful not to reveal anything and raise Wang Ji's suspicion. Liu smiled as he asked, Wang Gong Gong, what is it? How do you, you okay? Wang Ji scoffed. You thief! You dare ask when you dare ask when you stole his highness's fish? Liu did a double take. Wang Gong Gong had always been cordial to towards him. Stupid, stupid, stupid guy! I love him, but you're so stupid! He wasn't used to being yelled at. Sob, sob, sob. Wait, did they already discover the fish plushie and the window he just had purposely left open? There wasn't much time left. If he was captured by Wang Ji and he transformed into a fish in front of all these guards, Liu wanted to calm down, but this wasn't something that could be solved by calming down. He had to find a place to hide first. He couldn't turn into a fish in front of all these people. An idea struck. He yanked something out from inside his sleeve and yelled, Over there! He hurled the object with all his might. With Wang Ji and the guards distracted, he turned on his heel and broke into a sprint. Wang Ji originally, ha originally hadn't been certain if this youth was a thief, so he had bluffed. But now, seeing him run away, that meant he was really guilty. But the thief was too quick, and Wang Ji didn't get to see what he had flung before he made his escape. Wang Ji gritted his teeth, terrified the p person might have thrown the fish out. He quickly ordered a few guards to take a look, while he and the rest of the guards gave chase. Liu sprinted as fast as he could and found a room to hide in. Meanwhile, Prince Jing had been searching with a few people in the gardens. After receiving Wang Ji's me message, he rushed over to meet up with him. Together, they trapped Liu in front of the room where he was hiding. It was quickly confirmed that what the youth had thrown was fish food. There was no doubt about it. This person... Bleh, why are my S's being crazy right now? This person had stolen the fish. Wang Ji couldn't, fa couldn't have been more furious. Once he caught that person, righteous justice would be doled out. Not only had this person caused trouble during a banquet, they even dared to steal the prince's clothes and his cute, lively fish. They dared to did de they deserved to be sliced through thousands of times. <laughs> Hurry up and come out. Hand over the prince's fish. Otherwise, you'll have to face the consequences. Wang Gong Gong yelled fiercely as he banged at on the door. Liu poked a hole in the window and peeked out. <laughs> prince Jing stood outside the room grim-faced and holding his sword. But as soon as Liu laid eyes on Prince Jing, his fish instincts kicked in and he wanted to swish his tail. Get a room! Oh my god, just kiss already, I swear to god. Then he remembered he was human right now. Prince Jing didn't know him as a human. If they met, that sword in the prince's hand would stab him to death. Wang Ji wanted to ham. <laughs> Wang Ji wanted him to hand over the fish. On the on <laughs> second time, let's go. On the one hand, he was very moved. On the other hand, this wasn't what he wanted at all. The fish in question was right in front of them. What was Liu supposed to hand over? At first, he was planning to wait until everyone had left before leaving the room, but with the situation as it was now, Prince Jing and Wang Ji were both waiting for him like predators outside the burrow of a rabbit. There was no way he was leaving any time soon. No way. God, this is so fun. Oh, I love it. Suddenly, the system beeped a warning. User. You cannot maintain your human form for much longer. Uh-oh. Stupid system. It usually played dead, but now it was giving him a countdown? He was about to turn back? It had taken so much work to transform just once, and now it was all going to be over. Liu only had time to eat one meal, but that wasn't the most important part. The important part was that right now he was trapped in this room. 
If he turned back into a fish right here, how was he supposed to explain how a human disappeared, in quotations, at the same time the fish appeared? Liu had an idea. Counting down the time, he yelled at the people outside the door. I won't leave. Come and get me. If you catch me, I'll hand over the fish. Liu was trying to buy some time for him. But Liu was trying to buy some time for himself as well as prepare for what was to come. When a cornered person made such a bold challenge, the reasonable assumption was that they'd laid some kind of trap, so the people outside usually wouldn't barge in right away. Uh-oh. He thought this would be enough to make Prince Jing falter for, for a bit. But he barely finished shouting before Prince Jing broke through the door. <laughs> Li Yu yelped in alarm. A youth, Mu Tianqi, had never seen before... Oh, okay. A youth Mu Tianqi had never seen before was standing stock still in a jade green robe. The young man glanced back at him before hastily escaping out the window. Mu Tianqi wasn't, uh, wasn't going to fall for the same trick twice. He had previously been fooled by the open window, mistakenly believing that the thief had left that way. The thief's deception had led him to look in the wrong place, and he failed to catch the thief. This time, he made sure the person had absolutely no escape out of the room. He had several guards ch stationed at each of the windows before ordering Wang Ji to yell at the thief within. What? Mu Tianqi chased after the youth, his long legs carrying him across the room in just a few strides, but the youth had already left in onto the windowsill. God. He looked over his shoulder and flashed Prince Jing a mischievous smile. And that is what the illustration is on the next page. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> by the book. <laughs> Support the author by the book. If you want to see the illustrations, by the book. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so fucking cute. I'm obsessed. <sighs> Mu Tianqi froze. Was it just him, or did this youth... Ugh. He was a delicate, clean young man, his eyes as bright as colored glaze. There was something unbelievably familiar in the way his lips quirked up. Was this the dude that sucked on your nipple? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Mu Tianqi hesitated for a moment, but that moment cost him. All he managed to catch was a single corner of the suspicious of the suspicious youth's robe. In the blink of an eye, the youth jumped out of the window. Mu Tianqi wasn't concerned, though. He waited quietly for the guards lying in wait to capture the youth. But after a while, he still heard nothing. He made his way outside to look for himself. The hidden guards reported that they hadn't seen anyone. Mu Tianqi furrowed his brows and spotted a heap of clothes piled up beneath the window. And on the ground was a tea bowl, with his fish inside, <laughs> swimming happily. <laughs> what a cunt! Oh god, this guy! <laughs> oh, he's so stupid. He's so stupid. I love him so much! <laughs> oh, I love him. <laughs> He is literally saying he 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 <laughs> You're gonna cast me he 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 <laughs> Stupid it's a game to him He's so stupid Oh that's the end of the chapter by the way <laughs> That is the end of the chapter The next chapter as I mentioned before is called Fish Selling Himself And I don't know what that means and I can't wait to find out <laughs> All right, chapter 21. Liu's head was swimming at first, but he very quickly realized he had turned back into a fish. His plan should have been foolproof. He was going to act like he had escaped out the window, disappeared, and left only the fish behind. But first of all, he wasn't expecting Prince Jing to break in so fast. Okay, yes, he was touched at how deeply Prince Jing cared about a fish. But now he had no time for his plan. Not only had the prince seen his true appearance, but he also had uh, but he had also almost transformed right in front of him. 
Sorry, I'm going back into the illustration. He's so cute! <laughs> so cute! He had nearly tripped in, in his haste to escape out the window. It was a good thing he turned back into a fish the moment he jumped, because it turned out Prince Jing had stationed people outside as well. If he had escaped from the window, so what? There were all these guards out here, and none of them would have seen so much as a glimpse of him. How could anyone explain? How could anyone exclaim? Nope. How could anyone explain the fact that a person had just disappeared and left behind a pile of clothes? Liu thought that at this moment Prince Jing was even more of a cheater than the system. At least when the system tricked him, he could find a way to get around it. But it was Prince Jing tricking him. There was nothing he could do about it. He didn't trick you. He was just doing what he. Oh, yeah. The guards who had been lying in wait all agreed that they hadn't seen any youth. As he watched Prince Jing come closer to examine his clothes, Li waved his tail hard, hoping to divert Prince Jing's attention. There shouldn't be anything incriminating about the clothes he had left behind, but he was afraid Prince Jing would somehow connect the dots. Although the reason he was switching his tail was to distract Prince Jing, it looked a bit like he was... Aw, uh, that's it. It looked a bit like he was selling himself. Ah, selling myself is a little... Is a little... Uh, selling myself a little bit is okay, but I absolutely cannot be mistaken for a fish spirit. Huh? Okay. As soon as Prince Jing heard his tail move, he, sto he stooped down to pick up the tea bowl. Liu swished his tail even more vigorously. Prince Jing was still a little hangry. He glared at the fish. Sorry. He glared at the fish, sparkling some, sparking some guilt in Liu. Knowing how much the prince liked it, he curled his tail around Prince Jing's finger, hoping to appease him. Every time his tail touched the prince's finger, Prince Jing seemed to relax a little. As expected, faced with Liu acting cute on purpose, Prince Jing temporarily forgot about the pile of clothes. Lips pursed, the prince pinched the little carp's back gently. <laughs> Liu knew that meant he was willing to play with him. Pushing his embarrassment aside, Liu continued to sell himself by acting cute. A guard walked over to give us a report. Your Highness, there's a pond nearby. Perhaps the thief caught the guards before they were ready to and swam off. But perhaps the thief caught the guards before they were ready and swam off. The guards had come to this conclusion because of the clothes. After all, a person couldn't just disappear into thin air. They'd already given themselves headaches trying to figure this out, but this was the only possibility they could come up with. Liu was shocked. They could even find a rational explanation for something like this. It made sense, though. A normal person would never consider the prospect of a human turning into a fish or a fish turning into a human. Their first deduction would, of course, be that the suspicious youth managed to get away. <clears throat> the guard's explanation wasn't outside the realm of plausibility. Prince Jing nodded, wanting to take a look at the pond himself, in case there were any suspicious footprints or anything like that. Liu desperately threw himself into his palm. There was nothing at the pond. He couldn't let Prince Jing go look. Prince Jing's eye... What? Prince Jing's brow was relaxed, despite Liu's frequent interruptions. He knocked on the fish's head lightly. Liu had been wondering for a while now... Bleh. Liu had been wondering for a while now why Prince Jing kept doing that, but no one could tell him. <clears throat> Seeing that Prince Jing was no longer so wary, though, Liu let out a sigh of relief. <coughs> He'd finally managed to escape unscathed. It wasn't a terrible outcome that they'd all concluded he must have escaped through the pond. After the guards finished examining his clothes, Wang Ji also confirmed that the inner robes and underwear on the ground belonged to Prince Jing. The rest of the clothing consisted of an ordinary old robe and a pair of old cloth shoes. Auntie Zhu was brought over in a matter of minutes. She identified the robes. She identified the robe she had given the youth. Auntie Zhu felt, felt terrible. 
Never did she expect that harmless, innocent youth to be a master fish-stealing thief. As she recalled giving the youth fish food, she felt so immensely regretful she wanted to kick herself. She told them everything she knew, that the fish thief was a male concubine, oh dear, who had been chased out by his master's deed wife. Uh-oh. That's not true. <laughs> Wang Gong Gong didn't know how to process that information. What kind of ridiculous reason was that? This person stole his highness's fish because he was being bullied by the D-wife? What did that have to do with anything? Liu was also listening in Prince Jing's hand, but he could barely understand what they were talking about. He was just someone who'd gotten lost. How did the auntie manage to come up with this scenario where he was someone's side-wife? Auntie Zhu kept kowtowing, Liu couldn't bear to watch. He peeked at Prince Jing, afraid he was going to punish her out of anger. After observing Prince Jing's expression, Wang Ji intoned severely, For hiding a thief, she should be thrown out of the manor. Aw. Liu's heart nearly stopped. No, he wasn't even a thief. Auntie Zhu just felt sorry for him and gave him some food to eat. Why did she have to be chased out? He didn't want to get Auntie Zhu in trouble all because she had been kind enough to help him. Liu hurriedly curled his tail around Prince Jing's finger, then rubbed back, to, back and forth pitifully. Prince Jing looked down. He did find the fish in the end, and his pet fish seemed unharmed. Prince Jing was in, pretty, Prince Jing was in a pretty good mood. He glanced at Wang Ji. Wang Ji immediately understood. Since the fish master has returned an unhaul, I did it up. What is going on with my voice? Since the fish master has returned unharmed, and in consideration of the fact that you weren't aware of the situation, we won't throw you out this one time. Thirty strikes of the board. Let this be a lesson learned. Nah, not even that. For helping someone that looked like they needed help, that's not fair. Tears of gratitude poured down her face. She had been too careless. She couldn't afford to lose this job and the prince's manor. Her skin was thick, and a beating was nothing compared to expulsion. Liu still wasn't happy with his outcome, but as he watched Auntie Zhu bow in thanks, sincerity written all over her face, he hoped he had at least helped a little. The guilt in his heart eased somewhat. If he overused his charms, the effect would eventually wear off. Liu stopped before it was too late. <clears throat> Prince Jing, who had been enjoying the fish's attention, was suddenly bereft. Wang Ji waved away, away <laughs> Wang Ji waved away Auntie Zhu and said to the prince, Your Highness, servant Zhu has been dealt with, but this old servant still thinks something is off. Why did the thief steal a fish? Remembering the sleeve he had torn off earlier, Prince Jing indicated to Wang Ji to bring it over. Aside from a few wet patches, there was a silver scale caught on the cloth. Holy shit, how could he leave behind such an obvious clue? Your Highness, Wang Ji said, shocked. How could a fish scale be stuck to the thief's sleeve? A shadow passed over Prince Jing's face. There had been a fish scale in Noble Consort's handkerchief after she had touched the fish, since there was one on the thief's sleeve. That could only mean one thing. The thief had also touched the fish. How dare he? <laughs> God. Wang Ji spoke for Prince Jing. Your Highness, the fish master has truly suffered a lot. <laughs> Is he still thinking about, <laughs> about earlier? <laughs> oh, he's just suffering so much, this poor fish. <laughs> Oh, man. Prince Jing patted the fish's head to comfort him. Huh? It, that's in... It, it says U-H dot 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 question mark <laughs> in italics. <laughs> Should he celebrate the fact that he had tricked the noble concert before? Now that Prince Jing had found the fish, Wang Ji reminded him that there were still guests at Ninghuai Hall. 
The guests all had to wait for him to return to bid their goodbyes if they wanted to leave. This was, after all, a banquet planned by the emperor. It was normal enough for the host to leave temporarily to deal with some things, and that was just what Prince Jing had was like, but he couldn't just come and go as he pleased. Prince Jing was still... Since Prince Jing was too lazy to go back to his rooms, he headed straight for Ninghui Hall, holding the fish in the tea bowl in his hands. Liu, who had been planning to use the time to secretly take care of a few loose ends, silently pro protested. No, he didn't want to go meet the second master. <laughs> Stupid. But a fish had no say in its master's decisions. Prince Jing carried him into Ninghua Hall and placed him down on the main table. Every single guest in the hall stopped in their tracks. They had all heard that Prince Jing was starting to take care of the fish and that he treasured it like nothing else. This must have been it. It wasn't clear who started it, but the guests all started to shower praise upon the little carp. Liu swished his tail happily, feeling a bit giddy. Ayah, he wasn't as good as they say he was. Yes, he was indeed cute and intelligent. <laughs> but anyone who says he was prettier than a koi had to be blind. Suddenly, the youth's dark eyes landed on a young man in white dance robes. This youth was exceptionally pretty. His features so fine that they could have been painted on. Amidst the chaos, he stood quietly, standing out in the boisterous crowd. This main character aura, this I don't need to seduce anyone, everyone automatically falls for me aura. <laughs> Liu started. Could this be the other protagonist, the bottom? Shut up! Not, you labeling yourself the bottom, that's so insane. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> Li Yu, you are crazy. You are crazy, Li Yu. Uh, the bottom's name was Chu Yan Yu. That's a cute name. Li Yu leaned over. Mm -mm. Li Yu leaned against the ledge of the tea bowl and observed him. Although he didn't like the second master, Chu Yan Yu's delicate features were far too alluring, drawing Li Yu's eyes to him. Prince Jing's brows knit together. What was the fish staring at? With a flick of his long fingers, Prince Jing pushed the little cart back into the tea bowl. Falling down unexpectedly, Liu playfully splashed some water right at Prince Jing, except he avoided it. Prince Jing laughed silently. Liu shook his tail, happily thinking that his master was also pretty. God, he was happy with just looking at the prince. No more looking at Chu Yan Yu. Second Prince Mu Tianzhao watched as Prince Jing brought the fish in. His lips twitched, but he didn't say a word. He knew that fish wouldn't die so easily. This was probably another one of Prince Jing's schemes. God. Give it up already, dude. He seethed silently. How dare Prince Jing threaten him over a fish? When he ascended to the throne, he would make that mute pay. Okay, bitch. Okay, bitch. We have some issues to... To take care of, huh? I'm winding up my um arm for a punch, and you know, you know when you, uh, why I oughta, why I oughta. <laughs> as soon as the third prince Mu Tianming saw Prince Jing return, he steeled himself and, for the third time that night, offered to present his dance. Prince Jing allowed it. Despite having been ignored twice so far, Chu Yanyu didn't let it bother him. He shook out his sleeves and glanced behind him. The sixth prince met his gaze from where he sat, not too far away. At the slight dip of the sixth prince... That is really hard to say. At the slight dip of the sixth prince's head, Chu Yanyu bit his lip and turned to bow graciously. Huh? This time, Liu was hanging entirely off the side of the tea bowl. While everyone was, ga the da da da, while everyone was gasping at Chu Yanyu's appearance, Liu was focused on the moment Chu Yanyu's eyes flickered to meet the sixth prince's. 
In the book, Prince Jing had fallen in love with Chu Yan Yu as soon as he laid eyes on him, but Chu Yan Yu didn't like Prince Jing back. His affections lay with the sixth prince. On the surface, he was a dancer given to Prince Jing by the third prince, but in reality, he was loyal to the sixth prince over either the, sir, the, over either the third prince or Prince Jing. The sixth prince had never been shown any favor by the emperor, and so he had become the third prince's lackey in hopes that he could live a better life. The third prince needed some th da, 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 da. the third prince needed someone who could sing and dance, so the sixth prince offered up the boy he had loved since they were children. Aww Chu Yan Yu who loved him in return. Aww Aww that's so sweet. I mean that's so sad, but it's sweet that they love each other. <laughs> oh, sorry. The sixth prince's ambition was hidden deeply inside his heart, but there was only one person he could trust. Chu Yan Yu was more than happy to sacrifice himself for the sake of the sixth prince's future. Stop it! I'm actually so sad because this reminds me of a fic that I read a, a while ago between fucking, um, if you've read Modao Zushi, um, uh, what is it, Ni Hui Sang? And... The original, what what's his face? I freaking forgot his name. Mo. The the guy that um Wang Ji. I'm actually. Wait, hang on. I'm getting so confused. Uh, anyway, it's just so sad. It was just so sad, and it's right me of that. And I'm so sad now. <laughs> ah! Okay. <sighs> the dance began. Chu Yan Yu had arranged the music and choreographed the routine. Despite all the interruptions so far, the guests were quickly immersed in the exquisite dance. After the group dance became a duet between Chu Yan Yu and another dancer, a stunning woman. Skirts whirled about, the dancers were like white lotuses in full bloom amongst the lotus leaves. Liu had absolutely no interest in the dance. In fact, he wanted to sink to the bottom of the water, but the tea bowl was too shallow, so he couldn't get very far. He had to settle for lying in the tea bowl, glancing at Prince Jing from the corner of his eye. Prince Jing was enjoying Chu Yan Yu's dance. Liu blew a bubble. What the hell? Li, Li Yu blew a little bubble and turned away. He didn't want to look at him anymore. Oh my god, he's sulking! Oh, stupid bitch. In the original book, Prince Jing asked Chu Yan Yu for his name once the dance was over. But after the last note of the dance dissipated into the air, Prince Jing didn't say anything. The second prince couldn't help but gloat. He might not have been able to put on a show of brotherly love with Prince Jing, but at least the third prince didn't achieve anything either. The third prince couldn't hold it in anymore and asked Prince Jing for his thoughts. Resting his cheek on his hand, Prince Jing gave Wang Ji a slight glance. Wang Ji immediately replied, It's fine. He replied, It's fine. Oh, okay. So through... It replied for Prince Jing. Okay. He said, It's fine. And that was it. The third and sixth prince... The third and sixth, God, the third and sixth princes, who had worked so hard to present Chu Yan Yu to him, were both silent. Liu was even more per perplexed. What happened to the love at first sight that he couldn't resist? Master, have you fallen asleep? Wake up! Your wife's about to disappear. <laughs> and that's chapter twenty-one. Oh no! Oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh no, oh no, oh no! Okay, we have to read at least two more chapters. Oh, but that chapter is so long. What the hell? Why is that chapter so long? No! You know what? We'll do it anyway. I don't care. I don't care. We're gonna. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see why. Okay. For now, though, we're going to take a short break. A short mini break. I'm gonna refresh my tea. 
replenish on T. Replenish, restock. Sorry, I'm being a little bitch today. <laughs> I'm gonna get more tea. We're gonna come back and then we're gonna read chapter 22, The Fish is Wanted. Yeah, we know, obviously. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I will be right back, like five minutes. Uh, take this time to like walk around and do whatever. Go to the bathroom, do whatever you want, you know, all that um stretch. But yeah, I'm. I will be right back. Baby.
I'm back. Wow, that's so cool. We're all so excited. Gonna have a good time. I'm just gonna get myself situated here. Hopefully not knock everything over. Maybe not spill my tea. That would be ideal. It's still too hot for me to drink right now. But my throat's being pretty okay. It's like not hurting at all right now. All right, let's continue. Chapter 22. Oh, never mind. It's not in progress. We'll continue in a second. It actually 15 seconds. Let me just like catch my breath from standing up. <laughs> I stood up and my foot hurts so much. You know when you- Okay, so I sit crisscross. And that can sometimes really strain, like, the bottom of your foot. So, um, yeah, be careful about that. Because the, those cramps hurt so bad. The foot cramps? Oh, man. Alright, let's get started again. <sighs> Chapter 22. The fish is wanted. <laughs> prince Jing hadn't taken a fancy to any of the dancers. The third prince had been so confident in Chu Yan Yu, but all Prince Jing did was watch the dance. He didn't even give the, the dancer a second glance. At the uh, da, 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 all the praises Mu Tian Ming had been ready to sing were suddenly stuck in his throat. Chu Yan Yu was hardly perturbed. <laughs> With his eyes lowered to the ground, it was impossible to tell what he was thinking. The sixth prince nudged Mu Tianming. Third brother, Mu Tianming, had already embarrassed himself enough today. What was once more? He swallowed his pride and squeezed out a smile. I'm glad fifth brother thought it was fine. I myself thought it was quite lovely. In fact, I personally selected the lead male and female dancers. You liar. Why don't I gift them to the fifth, to fifth brother to pass the time? With him speaking so plainly, everyone knew what the third prince meant. Mu Tianming refused to believe Prince Jing would remain indifferent when faced with a direct gift. Prince Jing switched his hand, resting his cheek on the left. He pushed the little- he pushed the- Little carp always trips me up. He pushed- it's actually the little carp that trips me up. He pushed the little carp, who had popped out of the water again to look around back in oh he pushed okay he pushed the little carp who had popped out of the water again to look around back in prince jing's gaze swept towards wang ji once more wang ji who seemed connected to prince jing on an intuitive level said his highness said no <laughs> oh bitch no not no need or no thanks no meant he wasn't even interested Oh. Damn. Wu Tianming was at a loss for words. Prince Jing, are you unhappy with me in some way? Chu Yan Yu's thin back was ramrod straight, fingers curled tightly into fists. His eyes, his eyes flickered with fury. He already had someone in his heart, but for Prince Jing to treat him in such a way was downright humiliating. An extremely prideful man, Chu Yan Yu wasn't going to let such an in Dignant, uh, indignity pass without questioning it. Gay, yeah, you're gay. Liu was shocked. He didn't expect this. Was this still the delicate little concubine from the book who treated Prince Jing coldly? How did it get flipped around? As soon as he finished speaking, though, Chu Yanyu regretted his, th his thoughtlessness. And how? Good morning. <laughs> Prince Jing smiled mockingly, shook he Another gay? What the hell? We're all gay. What are we doing here? Look at us. We're reading gay fish and preg. Of course it's gay. Should I um recap? Um basically he turned into a human, he got caught. <laughs> and cornered, and then he turned back into a fish, and then, uh, it's a fish blowjob again. Not yet! <laughs> Not yet. 
he um got caught by Prince Jing, but Prince Jing was confused because he jumped out of the window and then turned into a fish immediately after that. So he was like, what the fuck where'd this guy go? But uh, you know, it's fine. I guess I have my fish. My fish is my fish. I love my fish. Oh my god, I love my fish so much. My fish is everything. That's what he's he said if he could speak. <laughs> It's so stupid. I love it so much. I'm insane. Anyway, they're holding a banquet because the emperor told him to. <laughs> and we met the second lead in this book. Book within a book. Um, who is Chu Yan Yu, a dancer who becomes a concubine for Prince Jing. Uh, against his will and then th that's the original story but right now Prince Jing just doesn't give a shit about anyone or anything except for his fish so it's not going um, according to the plot alright recap over let's go where were we <clears throat> As soon as he had finished speaking, though, Chu Yan Yu regretted his thoughtfulness, his thoughtlessness. Prince Jing, smock Prince Jing smiled mockingly, shook his head, and rose, tea bowl in hand. He ordered Wang Ji to set, send their guests off. Chu Yan Yu didn't know how to react. Did Prince Jing shake his head because he was dissatisfied with him? Wang Ji suddenly spoke. Chu Gongzi, Gongzi, don't misunderstand. His Highness didn't mean anything by it. Only, what concern would it be of His Highness's whether you were good enough or not? God damn! The third prince, Chu Yan Yu, and the second prince were all shocked into silence. Mu Tianming's head started to hurt. Prince Jing wouldn't even accept a gift that he was hand delivering him to that he was hand delivered that I need to read that again. <laughs> Prince Jing wouldn't even accept a gift that was hand delivered to him. What was he supposed to do now? Prince Jing kept Liu in, a, in the tea bowl, preventing the little cart from jumping out. Glee secretly shot through Liu at seeing Prince Jing's indifference towards Chu Yan Yu. In the book, Prince Jing had constantly chased after Chu Yan Yu, doing too much for his sake and getting injured too many times. If Prince Jing hadn't fallen in love with him, did that mean the prince's heart was safe? God, you're so stupid! All right. <laughs> but would changing the plot have some impact on Prince Jing in the future, despite the butterfly, uh, due to the butterfly effect? After some internal struggle, Liu stopped worrying about it. He was here to change Prince Jing's personality, after all, and wasn't that already a change to, uh, to the original plot of the book? Liu finally returned to Prince Jing's room. The prince poured him back into the crystal fish tank, where Liu noticed the plush had disappeared. The prince had probably already figured out the secret. Liu smiled derisively. There was no way Prince Jing had figured out that he was the one who put, placed the decoy, right? No, there was almost no chance. If Prince Jing couldn't even conceive of the possibility of him, him transforming into a human, how could he come to the conclusion that a fish had placed the plush? <laughs> what a stupid sentence. There was nothing to worry about. He was going to keep on following Prince Jing and kissing up to him. Oh, you kissed up to him, all right. As Prince Jing paced before the fish tank, Liu chased after him. Suddenly, the prince stopped. He pulled something out of his sleeve and dropped it into the tank. Bemused, Liu looked up and saw a blackish blob oh, floating down slowly to land next to him. It was a fish that looked exactly like him. Liu did a double take. Wasn't this the plushie? He snuck, he snuck a glance at Prince Jing. What did he mean by this? Acting as though he was an ordinary fish who didn't have a single thought in his brain, he snatched the plush up. He didn't dare drag the plush in the plushie onto the bed of white rocks and cover it with a leaf blanket like before. That would just be outright exposing himself. 
He swam a few laps in the water, nudging the plush like it was a toy. Prince Jing saw how much the little carp seemed to enjoy playing with the plush. From far away, it looked like he had a pair of inseparable, inseparable pet fish. <coughs> Liu had thought, oh no, I was, that's in the wrong, that's the wrong thing. Hang on. Let me see if my tea is too hot. Mmm. Perfect. Perfect. The prince paused, suddenly annoyed with the fake fish. Oh my god. He'd have Wang Zhi get rid of it later, but he had other things to take care of, so he walked over and sat down on his desk. Liu had thought of a new way of playing with the plush, by laying it across his back like he was carrying it. The plush was very light, so he didn't feel tired at all. After playing for a while, he realized Prince Jing was preoccupied with work, so the little carp pressed himself against the walls of the crystal tank to peek at him. Prince Jing was drawing again. He had painted the little carp once before in Jingtai Hall, and even asked Wang Ji to hang it up afterwards. Prince Jing had brought the painting with him when he returned to the manor, where it was currently hanging on the wall di diagonally up opposite the crystal fish tank. Was Prince Jing drawing him again? I'll bet he's drawing him, but not in that form. Liu thought delightedly. He was... <laughs> He was going to go pose. <laughs> Liu abandoned the fish plush and jumped into the into a tea bowl on the floor. Fucking stupid con His agility had been com compromised slightly after discovering after devouring basically an entire feast as a human, and he took and it took him a few jumps to reach Prince Jing's desk. <clears throat> There was a flower petal shaped tea bowl on the desk that he quite that he visited quite often. Prince Jing seemed to have expected that the fish would come with him come, come watch him paint, as he didn't seem the slightest bit surprised at the carp's sudden appearance. Prince Jing's painting was like Oi I don't know why I'm suddenly unable to read. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe T can fix it to fix everything. <clears throat> na, 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 na. Prince Jing's painting was a little larger this time. Liu held his breath. Although it wasn't done yet, and he couldn't see the entire thing right now, he could make out a hand and a foot. They seemed to be wearing clothes. Prince Jing wasn't drawing a fish this time. He was drawing a person. No way. I wonder who he's drawing. It couldn't have been you in human form. No way. Liu's heart sank. Was this Chu Yan Yu? Of course you'd think that. Fucking stupid ass bitch. Despite rejecting the third prince, Prince Jing's heart was still with Chu Yan Yu. Idiot. But he didn't seem to like Prince Jing's style at all. In the book. But that didn't seem like Prince Jing's style at all. In the book, Prince Jing was the kind of man who would stop at nothing to keep the person he loved by his side. There was no chance that Prince Jing was still thinking about Chu Yan Yu after he'd rejected him outright. It was more likely that this was a portrait of Wang Ji than it was of Chu Yan Yu. Li waited quietly for Prince Jing to finish drawing and then coloring. This painting was a little complicated, and it took him a full hour to complete. Only an hour? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Prince Jing picked up the painting and shook it. That was when Liu finally got a good look at the entire thing. Prince Jing was a talented painter, and the colors came together with a vivid and lifelike and lifelike impression. Captured in the strokes of the painting was a youth in green robes. His hands rested on the windowsill as he turned back, a smile lighting up his face. Holy crap! Why did this person look kind of familiar? Wasn't this his human form? Did Prince Jing recreate the moment he almost got caught? Prince Jing painted the, a fish... Uh, Prince, Jing, Prince Jing painting a fish was understandable, but a person he'd barely met? 
the little carp couldn't figure it out. Prince Jing set the painting to the side and rang a jade bell to call for his servants. Wang Ji quickly entered from outside. Prince Jing handed the painting over to Wang Ji solemnly. Wang Ji then leaned in and whispered something in his ear for the prince's confirmation. Why are you whispering? After his affirmative, Wang Ji's expression looked rather serious. Hmm. Was Prince Jing going to ask Wang Ji to hang it up so that his human portrait and the fish portrait were side by side? They were both him, but it was a little weird. Rest assured, your highness, Wang Ji said, this old servant will order the guards to look for this person, for, to look for the person in this portrait immediately. What? Prince Jing drew a circle on the paper. Wang Ji nodded. I'll make sure they search along the, prince, the pond's edge. Edge? Jeez. We definitely... F <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just going to take a moment to recollect myself because this is not going the way I want it to go. And by this, I mean brain to mouth um, connection. Eyes to brain to mouth. They're like getting a divorce right now, the three of them. They were in a poly relationship, but now, you know, shit is going down. <clears throat> we'll definitely find this person. He'd spent so long distracting Prince Jing with his body, and the prince was still determined to capture him. Well, whatever. Even if they had the portrait, they wouldn't be able to find him. They wouldn't find anything in the pond, because the person they were searching for was currently in Prince Jing's fish tank. After the banquet in Prince Jing's manor, a dejected third prince left with Chu Yan Yu and the others. Mu Tianming refused to believe that all his careful pre preparations had gone down the drain. After a round of discussions with his after a round of discussions with his trusted advisors, he decided to li to deliver Chu Yan Yu and the other female lead dancer to Prince Jing's manor anyway. What the fuck? As soon as he left them there, Mu Tianming dashed off faster than a thief, thus forcing Prince Jing to accept them. What the fuck, you st Oh, man. Chu Yan Yu already has... His heart is taken by another. You can't force this upon them. I want to hear his story, honestly. The news of the third prince gifting Prince Jing some people circulated quickly, soon reaching the emperor's ears. The emperor was amused, but ultimately, he was quite pleased to see that to see the third prince's efforts to get on Prince Jing's good side. The banquet had been held on behalf of Prince Jing and the second prince, but according to his scouts, Prince Jing's fish had vanished after the second prince visited Prince Jing's rooms. Was the second prince causing trouble for the fish again? The emperor was still alive now, but if the second prince couldn't even let a fish go, what would happen later? Would he try to get rid of Prince Jing? <clears throat> the emperor wondered if he had revealed his choice of crown. Oh, da -da. The emperor wondered if he had revealed the choice of crown prince to noble consort true too early. This wasn't the first time Mu Tianzhao had disappointed him, after all. As a warning to the second prince, a few days after the banquet, the emperor awarded only the third prince with a tea set. Oy, oy, oy. It wasn't anything precious, but no one else received this honor. Not even the second prince. Because the emperor had rewarded him specifically right after he had sent people to Prince Jing's manor, Mu Tianming thought he had hit he had hit on the right way to get closer to Prince Jing. This could only mean that the emperor hoped he and Prince Jing could get along. The sixth prince 
had also corrected her had also correctly guessed the emperor's intentions the emperor rewarding only the third prince and not the second prince signaled the beginning of the second prince's downfall this was all thanks to your recommendation mu tianming smiled as he patted mu tianzhao's shoulder it was good it was a good idea to send chu yanyu into prince jing's manor did we get the sixth prince's name before I think I think we did. I think I'm just forgetting. Mu Tianzhao. It's a cute name. The second, duh, 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 the sixth prince smiled back gently, not letting even a sliver of resentment show on his face. But you love him. How could you? Even though his lover had gone to Prince Jing's manor, Yan Yu, Yan Yu's clever. He won't let you down, brother. What the fuck? Prince Jing heard when Prince Jing heard the news from Wang Ji, his expression was mild. Wang Ji Gong Gong had already already had a wealth of experience with outsiders trying to cram people into the manor. The Emperor himself had sent many people over the years, men and women, fat and skinny. Prince Jing didn't like any of them, so they were all se sequestered in a courtyard in the manor. No one was allowed to come out with permission. Ah, oh, come on. After they'd stayed for a year, those who wanted to leave the manor could leave. Those who wanted to stay all became servants. Now the third prince had sent over Chu Gongzi. Gongji. Gongzi? Gongzi? Is it just Gongzi? And his female counterpart. His highness had already made it very clear he didn't want them. But the third prince had gone and left them there anyway. Looking at Prince Jing's expression, Wang Jin knew that the courtyard was about to get two new additions. That's the end of that chapter. You wanna know what the next chapter is called? Bathing with the fish. That is what it's called. I am not making this up. <laughs> this is why we need to read the next two chapters because this one also has an illustration and it's so cute god i love spoiling things for myself <laughs> it's so cute i am crazy i'm crazy but this one is actually really long this chapter so i have no idea if i can get through all of it today but we're going to try anyway. And by long, I just mean uh, not just like 10 pages. <laughs> this is like, what, uh, 21 to 20, uh, what are it? 21 to 44? How much is that? 24, 20, 23 pages? Yeah, it's like double the amount of pages from a normal chapter size. But you know what? I'm feeling good. I think we can do it. My thoughts not is is a little bit, but it's not too much, you know. So I think we might manage to do it. Anyway, bathing with a fish, chapter twenty three. Li was completely oblivious to the roundabout way Chu Yanyu was entering the manor. He assumed a direct rejection by Prince Jing would be enough to put him off. A grand total of zero sparks had flown between the main top and bottom. Liu was a bit worried that it'd affect Prince Jing's future. System, he called out. What'll happen if the plot completely changes? Prince Jing hadn't taken to Chu Yanyu at all. It felt off to him. The system rose from the dead to reply. Everything will be fine, as long as the user completes his Moi pet fish mission. Did that mean the plot was allowed to become totally unrecognizable then, as long as he compl completed his fish, in parentheses, E, mission? <laughs> Liu was kind of excited. At first, he had been worried that the fish scamming system would give him some kind of mission to get Prince Jing and Chu Yanyu together, but apparently. Right, okay. But apparently, the plot progression was none of his business. It'd be pretty nice if Prince Jing could dodge the angsty relationship he had with Chu Yanyu altogether, he thought. Besides, if Prince Jing didn't like Ch Chu Yanyu, Chu Yanyu probably didn't like Prince Jing either. How could a fish like him press their heads together and order them to kiss? 
It'd be impossible. For the first time, Liu felt like it wasn't all that bad to have a system. Sure, it scammed him all the time, but it wasn't totally useless. Just as he was celebrating, the system reminded him, The altered plot will affect the course of future events. Plot points unrelated to the altered plot will still progress, and plot points related to the altered plot will change accordingly. Please be prepared, as the user will not be familiar with the modified plot. Jeez. <clears throat> it was rare for the fish scamming system to be so talkative. But what it was saying made sense to Liu. The original book didn't ha did have a lot of plot lines that resolved that revolved around the relationship angst between Prince Jing and Chu Yan Yu. So those plot lines would obviously be influenced if Prince Jing wasn't pursuing Chu Yan Yu. That was the butterfly effect. <clears throat> Liu the fish was very generous. Why? That's what the fuck? Why the title? Liu the fish was very generous. It's all right. I'll be prepared. But would it affect Prince Jing's path to the throne? What if the butterfly was too strong and ended up slapping his throne away with its unnaturally muscular wings? Prince Jing was the D son, and he didn't get along with the other princes. So if he couldn't become the emperor, he was practically guaranteed a miserable fate. So Liu still wanted him to become the emperor. System. No matter how it happens, the, U the tyrant's protagonist status guarantees he will become the emperor. This is an unavoidable canon event. With that sentence, Liu was reassured. Next, he planned to slowly and leisurely study how he was going to attain a deep understanding of the tyrant. Oh, right. Since you answered me, then help me with this too. I think I understand Prince Jing pretty well already, so what exactly does a deep understanding mean? Sure enough, the fish scamming system promptly played dead as soon as he brought up one of his missions. Typical. <laughs> <clears throat> no matter. Liu still politely bade the system a good day. <laughs> when he regained his senses, he found the prince. He found that Prince Jing had lifted him out from the fish tank again. From time to time, the little fish would simply fall asleep like this. Fish don't sleep, and whenever sorry, the <laughs> it's stupid. And whenever that happened, Prince Jing would watch over him. They were both used to it by now. Liu flapped his tail to show that he was alive and kicking, but Prince Jing frowned. Perhaps he'd, appre Perhaps he'd happened to touch Liu's belly when he lifted him out of the tank and felt that something was off, because he was currently rubbing Liu's fish belly. Okay, that's one way to put it. Ah. Prince Jing's actions reminded Liu that his normally flat fish belly was a little swollen. Right, he remembered. When he returned into a human, he'd absolutely gorged himself, but his bulging stomach was the same after he turned back into a fish. Perhaps the system didn't notice this problem either. I just ate too much. I'm fine, Leo wanted to explain. But he couldn't. Prince Jing kept rubbing his belly with that strange expression on his face for a bit until he came to the conclusion that the fish was sick again and called for someone to come. <clears throat> Sorry, my nose is being silly. It's affecting my throat. Bless you. I didn't sneeze, but thank you. I appreciate it either way. <laughs> uh, da the servants who'd examined the fish for sickness before now examined his belly for a bit. One of them wiped the sweat from his forehead and said, uh, Your Highness, the fish seems to have eaten too much. It'll go away. It'll go away after a little more swimming around. Another servant added, 
It's not because the fish is, um, pregnant. There it is, folks. There it is. All right. Good day. Uh, have a nice day. I'm. I'm gonna head it out. Thanks for watching. Oh. <laughs> and that's you know we don't need to do any more because we find out if the fish is pregnant or not. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, no, we're not, we're not stopping there. But oh my goodness, there it is. The other servants pres present wanted to poke their eyes out. This fish was male. Why did his highness ask such a question? What? Liu was scared shitless by what the servant had said. Pregnant? Did Prince Jing thought <laughs> think he had little fish inside him? How would that be possible? Men couldn't get pregnant, and male fish couldn't give birth to little fish. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, you didn't know you know you were reading an Empreg, uh, book. <laughs> Sucks to be you, I guess. Actually, there's only a few fish that give birth to live fish. Most of them lay eggs. And most of them just fucking eat <laughs> the baby fish. <laughs> Once they, um, hatch or, um, it's most, I think it's mostly the, the fish that give birth to live fish. They just eat their babies. I don't know. It's like hamsters and other animals. <laughs> Thanks for the foreshadowing offer. I know. <laughs> Oy. Did Prince Jing get his gender wrong even though he'd been taking care of him for so long? Liu puffed up in anger. After the, after the fish had been examined to his satisfaction, Prince Jing tried pushing him around with his fingers so he could digest his food. But Liu had no desire to move. He just lay there on the prince's hand. Luckily, the food he'd eaten when he was a human was still easily digested when he turned back into a fish. So Liu was back to normal in no time, full of vim and vigor. The recovered Liu soon forgot his anger and stated, and started thinking, what the hell, and started trying to think of things he could do that might help him get a deeper understanding. He might as well try and take a bath while with Prince Jing, he thought. What the fuck? He managed to complete the bed-sharing task after all, so how hard would it be to take a bath with him? This is what you call deep- you- you think, hmm, deeper understand, understanding, what could that mean? Oh yeah, I gotta see him naked. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. Oy, oy, oy. If Prince Jing was willing to put him on his jade pillow, he probably wouldn't be against uh, bringing him into the bathtub, provided, of course, that he didn't fall into hot water and turn the whole tub into fish stew. But the hot water was probably easy to solve. There were definitely ladles in the bathroom, or the other tools for scooping up hot water. Liu couldn't help but think that it would have been nice to have a mission where his job was to become a little hot spring fish. <laughs> but the system ignored him. It probably thought he wasn't worth talking to. Yeah, because you don't know anything about fish. Okay, it's fine. Acclimate your fish. Okay. Mm, just saying. <laughs> when it was time for Prince Jing to take a bath, Liu jumped around more excitedly than he ever had before. Wang Ji was outside holding a portrait of human Liu, stopping at nothing to try to capture his likeness. But when he turned around and caught sight of the little carp, his wrinkles bloomed into a smile. Little thing, do you want to get into the bath with his highness? Liu leaped towards the side of the fish tank. He went all out this time, becoming completely shameless, blowing bubbles at Wang Ji and acting cute. Wang Ji consulted Prince Jing. Prince Jing found Liu's actions a little strange too, and after a bit of thought, he agreed and had someone make proper arrangements. Wang Ji fetched a large wooden ladle meant to hold water. When he used 
what the hell, which he used to scoop out the little carp from the tank, along with some of the water. <coughs> In the bathroom, Prince Jing had already finished making preparations. There were quite a lot of charcoal bra braziers in the bathroom, making thing making the room warm and cozy. Behind the screen, placed in the middle of the room, was a bathtub, almost as tall as a person, where Prince Jing sat in his inner robes, motioning Wang Ji to come over and put the wooden ladle in the water. I'm sorry, he's in his inner robes? What? The wooden ladle holding the little cart floated in the bathtub, making it look like Prince Jing was bathing in the bathtub while the fish was bathing in the ladle. Shut up! <laughs> Liu wiggled, wiggled eagerly in the ladle, trying to move it toward Prince Jing, but the ladle was much lighter than the small tea bowls he was used to, and since it was both floating in the water and filled with water, he found it hard to control his strength. Liu couldn't move the ladle forward and instead started spinning in circles. He was pretty d dizzy after just a couple of spins. <laughs> what a stupid idiot. Idiot, stupid, stupid idiot. <laughs> Prince Jing smiled a little and lifted his head to stop the spinning ladle. When Liu fin fully came back to his senses, he was met with the sight of Prince Jing's handsome face, a face that seemed even more pristine in the bath. He even saw a water drip droplet slide down Prince Jing's cheek to his Adam's apple. His Adam's apple rolled, and the water droplet fell. Man's is looking. Oh, it's so pretty. The illustration. Oh, I don't know. It's them in the bath. <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> Liu hadn't inadvertently bitten or chewed anything this time, <laughs> but just like last time, he felt like he was getting cooked over a fire. It was definitely the hot water's fault. <laughs> he buried his head in the wooden ladle's water, feeling a bit embarrassed. Calm down a little, he told himself firmly. He was a fish who would do anything to complete his quest. He must not be tempted by the beauty of his owner. He lifted his head, wanting to swim closer, but he used too much strength, and instead of spinning in place, the ladle abruptly tilted to the side and fell over. This dude is so homosexual, that's crazy. I know. I know. Well, he was reading... He was reading BL, so... You know, I believe it. Oy. Seriously, he was about to win a Darwell Award here. I don't know what that means. Hot water surged into the ladle, and Liu lamented that there was more ways for a fish to die than just turning into fish bones and fish ash. After everything he'd gone through, he still had to contend with being boiled into soup. The water... Huh? The water's not hot? A stunned Liu floated in the hot water a bit before it sank in that he could still swim. The water pouring in from the tub was cold too. What was going on? Liu carefully swam out of the upended wooden ladle, now in the same bathtub as Prince Jing. It didn't take too long for him to understand what was going on. Prince Jing had replaced the hot water in the tub with cold water since he wanted to play in the bathtub. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Owner, how could you treat me so well? <laughs> it actually said, wait, wait, wait. <sighs> oh, it's too cute. <clears throat> Liu flapped his tail twice, trying to swim closer to his owner. It was rare for a fish and a human to be so close, with nothing in between them. Prince Jing smiled slightly as he scooped up a handful of water and poured it <laughs> onto Liu's head, as if he was getting revenge on the little fish for all the times he'd splashed him in the past. <laughs> you bully, you dare tease a fish! Liu shook off the water on his head, while Prince Jing smirked smugly. 
Liu had never seen such an expression on him, and without pausing to think, he leaped over, opening his mouth and biting chaotically. You gotta stop doing that, my guy. Every time you do that, it goes wrong. Stupid bitch. A human and a fish were tussling in the water. At first, Wang Ji was worried that Prince Jing wouldn't be able to physically tolerate being soaked in the cold water, but the water he was bathing, bathing in had been left in a warmed room with charcoal braziers for a while now, so it shouldn't be freezing cold anymore. Plus, Prince Jing would sometimes practice his martial arts in cold water during winter, so it should be fine. But just in case, Wang Ji still prepared some ginger soup for his for Prince Jing, for when Prince Jing got out of the bath to drive away the cold. I hate ginger. <clears throat> Fair enough. His Highness seemed in much better spirits after the little thing, Master Fish, joined him in the tub. Wang Ji was sincerely happy for Prince Jing as he listened to them splashing around from outside. After the bath, Liu was scooped up, scooped back into the wooden spoon and brought out by Prince Jing himself. Liu tittered happily. There had been a mission update during his water fight with Prince Jing. It looked like taking a bath together was to understand a man deeply. What's the correct line of thinking? Okay. <laughs> you know what? Sure. Yeah, I'm not the author. Go for it. Fucking go for it. I don't care anymore. <sighs> Liu waited until the middle of the night to check out the reward. He'd been in a bad mood back when the quest first popped up, so he hadn't been paying much attention to it. But he told himself to keep his expectations low. The fish scamming system had given him a lousy fish plushie last time after all. When he collected the reward, a bright light briefly flashed under his fin before disappearing, much like what happened when he received the inventory reward. <clears throat> Liu lowered his head to take a glance. Next to the jade scale that he used- what the hell? Next to- Sorry, my mouth is just sticking together. <clears throat> I don't know a better way to explain it. It's just trying to stick together. Liu lowered his head to take a glance. Next to the jade scale that he used to access his inventory, there was another very similar scale. <clears throat> what is this for? What if he tapped the wrong one in the future? since they looked so similar and were so close to one another. Uh-oh. Liu tried to poke the new scale, but didn't feel anything in particular. Uh-oh. The next moment, though, he found that his body had grown bigger. He looked towards his fins in surprise, only to find that his fins had turned into hands. Delighted, Liu asked. System, what's going on? He touched his face happily. His face was smooth, free of fish scales. He didn't understand why, but he had turned into a human. Was this what the system was talking about when it said he could turn back into a human if he kept completing the missions? Was he fully back now? Apologies, user. This is just a skill. The system began to explain, late as always. A skill? The main mission will become increasing, increasingly complicated from here onwards and will be harder to complete if you can't turn into a human, the system said. The reward this time is a skill that allows you to maintain your human form for an hour, once per day. What kind of skill is this? It didn't even last as long as the transformation medicine. But if he could use it once per day... Wait, didn't the system say there was only one bottle of the transformation medicine? The system was lying again. If he'd known he was going to get a skill that would let him turn it human for an hour a day, he wouldn't have been so stingy and calculating when he used the transformation medicine. There is only one bottle of the transformation medicine. The reward this time is a skill. But if you dislike it, user, you can give it up. Leo panicked. Who said I was giving it up? I earned this by working hard on my quest. He hunched over his jade scale protectively. 
Now that he turned back into a human, the jade scales had turned into two scale-like markings under his arm. Is he in the tank? Where is he? Where is Prince Jing? Is he sleeping? What is going on? <clears throat> I have so many questions. I have so many questions. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Then please use it well, the system replied. The next mission is the final quest in the Priceless Pre Pet Fish mission. Once it's completed, all your stats will be doubled, your inventory slots will increase by one, and you can begin the side mission. Turn into a koi. Was he finally about to finish the main quest? The reward sounded quite lavish, and he would be able to start the long-awaited koi mission soon. But what exactly was the last mission? In the mindscape where the si system resided, the words Tyrant Priceless Pet Fish started glowing golden. Tyrant's Priceless Pet Fish. Liu examined the last step of the quest. The last step. Intimate contact with the tyrant. There were no more details. Liu suddenly had a bad feeling. Wait, intimate contact? Is that the kind of intimate contact I'm thinking of? Please come to your own conclusion, user. <laughs> Just called him a fucking dumbass. <laughs> okay. When it really mattered, the system had started bullshitting again. <clears throat> Liu puttered around the system for a while. His time as a human running his time as a human ran out quickly, and he changed back into a fish. Since this transformation was the result of a skill instead of medicine, Liu didn't feel any unpleasant side effects. Now that the transformation was finished, the jade scale lost its luster, indicating that it could not be used until the next day. With this skill he could turn into a human once in a while, but he had to be careful. He couldn't show himself whenever he wanted, since Prince Jing was still looking for him everywhere. Mindfully occupied, he exited the system. Luckily, even though he'd been in his human form in the system, okay, sure, of course, of course. <sighs> in the waking world, he was still a fish. Perhaps the system had helped him. The image of the human man, <clears throat> the image of a human man fainting in a fish tank was pretty alarming. He had already progressed into the last stage of Priceless Pet Fish. Just one more step, and he'd be done with the main quest. Oh boy. He was getting closer and closer to turning back into a human, and to do that, he had to work hard at achieving intimate contact. Yet the only intimate contact he was thinking of was... mouth to mouth. With the help of the tea bowls laid out across the floor, Liu jumped lightly from the fish tank to the foot of the bed. It was late now, so Prince Jing was asleep. Liu stared at his luscious lips, remembering how he'd bitten them before and had to apologize for it with fish food. And now, he had to do something so shameless. No need to think so much. It was just a mission. He and Prince Jing were already good friends who understood one another deeply. Liu kept telling himself. So he had to, uh, so he had to strike while the iron was hot to get this over with now. It only get more embarrassing as time went on. Having managed to convince himself, the little carp jumped onto the jade pillow, closed his eyes, and inched his fish lips forward. <laughs> but it was so much easier to do something like this accidentally. Doing it on purpose was hard. Oh, that's almost hard. Uh, anyway, uh, Le <laughs> Leo felt like he'd been inching forward for a while but the softness he remembered still seemed out of reach. He opened his eyes, only to find that Prince Jing had turned around. Liu stared at the back of his head. Then I'll jump again! He leaped onto the other side, doing his best to stretch his fish lips out, <laughs> but he still didn't make contact. He opened his eyes. Prince Jing opened his eyes, too. Liu all but forgot where he was. With a guilty conscience, he immediately started flapping his tail. Rev uh, rev revealing his impure intentions. 
except his thumping on the jade pillow, was way too loud. Sob, 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 what should I do? Prince Jing, who had probably been woken up by the fish jumping around, <clears throat> found his pet fish found his pet lying on the, his pillow and flapping its tail as soon as he woke up. Still sleepy, Prince Jing dragged the nearest bowl over to put the fish in. He patted Liu's head lightly and lay down to sleep again. What the hell? Could someone tell Liu what the head patting meant? That's in the book. That wasn't me. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking it too. Liu didn't dare make another attempt to inch his mouth forward. He didn't want to wake up next to the sleeping figure in front of him again. Forget it. Next time. Well, he wasn't in a hurry anyway. Liu hunkered down next to Prince Jing and fell asleep too. That's like half- there's a scene break here. That's like halfway through the book. I- the book? The chapter. I am- I can continue. I just need to go to the bathroom real quick. I've been drinking a lot of tea. I gotta pee. <laughs> but we'll finish this uh, chapter as soon as I get back. I'll be like two minutes probably max, okay? I will be right back. If my mouse would work. That would be so cool if it could work. Oh, it would be so cool if my mouse would work. Am I gonna have to use my tablet? Hello? Hello? Okay, it's working. Okay, BRB. See, so short. So short. How long was that? Is that like two seconds? Oh. Um, I'm just gonna run an ad real quick. Because it's coming up. I don't want it interrupting. No. <clears throat> so fast. I should have done that while I was in the bathroom, but whatever. It is what it is. I don't have enough tea anymore, but it's okay. It's okay. We only have a couple pages left. <clears throat> I love this book. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so silly. It's so silly. It's so silly. All right, let's continue. An unexpected visitor, oh no, came to Prince Jing's manor. Prince Jing was cold towards most people, so he hardly ever invite, invited any guests. There were usually only two types of people who came to the manor. The first type was people from the palace who were there to sort out businesses, to sort out business and announce royal edicts. The second type was Yi Qinghuan, the heir of the house of Chang'un. <clears throat> This young lord liked a good crowd and up this start over. This young lord liked a good crowd, the opposite of Prince Jing's preferred solitude, but he just wasn't afraid of Prince Jing's frosty disposition and often came to the manor just to hang out. Yi Shiji 
she z she z she <laughs> she z i'm actually gonna check if there's a pronunciation guide for that there is not <laughs> there is not a pronunciation guide for that i think i think Oh. There's a definition of that, though. She's denoting the heir to a title. I don't know what that means. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Oh, whatever. <clears throat> Yi Shizi didn't care that every time he visited... Shiji. Shiji? No, that's she. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is gonna, oh no, I actually have to know, I have to know. I have to find out. <laughs> Pronunciation. <laughs> Please. Please. What the fuck? Okay. I'm not sure that's the same word. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the same word, but okay. She, 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 uh, no, I actually have no idea. I'm gonna <laughs> struggle with this so much. Uh, Yi Shiju didn't care. We're just gonna go with that. Didn't care that every time he visited, Prince Jing's face was as dark as the bottom of a walk. <laughs> it made him happy, even. Prince Jing could tell everyone else who came to scram, but not him, because Yi Shiju, Shi Shiju, Shiju, <laughs> was his cousin. At most, he could only order the guards to grab Yi Chinghuan by the collar and throw him out. Yi Shiji did, hadn't been able to attend the banquet that was recently held at Prince Jing's Manor because he had official manners to, matters to attend to, and he quite regretted missing out on the fun. He rushed over to Prince Jing's Manor as soon as he had time, just a couple of days later. He had also heard that Prince Jing had started taking care of a pet fish, of a pet, a pet fish at that. Yi Ching. Ching Yuan. Nope, that is a different Ching Huan. That is a different character. <laughs> Ye, uh, Ye Ching Huan. Ye Ching Huan had actually made this trip to show off his own pet, a dog. He thought that he had a little more in common with Prince Jing now, and they'd be able to chat with each other about their pets. Wang Ji led Ye Qinghuan with his dog in tow to meet Prince Jing. When he saw his cousin, Ye Qinghuan grabbed a chair, sat down excitedly, and immediately started asking after the fish without having Wang Ji announce him. Tian Qi, are you really keeping a pet, uh, keeping a fish as a pet? Prince Jing glanced at the large black dog behind Ye Qinghuan, decked out in a heavy collar of pure gold. Instead of throwing his cousin out immediately like he usually did, Prince Jing, sniggled, Prince Jing signaled Wang Ji to bring the fish tank out. Jeez. The crystal fish tank from the emperor hadn't been moved since it was brought to Prince Jing's residence, as it was extremely inconvenient to move. Something so heavy and l large... <coughs> that was wrong. As it was extremely inconvenient to move something so heavy and large. But since Ye Chizhi was visiting, Prince Jing wanted to move the fish tank. Wang Ji felt both helpless and amused as he thought, Who asked Ye Chizhi to show... I, I, I don't want to get confused with Shi Ji. Shi Ji... I'm gonna... I'm gonna be so sad. Who asked Ye Shi Ji 
to show him off, to show off in front of his highness. Of course he's going to show off in return. Honestly, there would have been nothing wrong with just letting Ye Shiji ant enter the room to see the fish, but Prince Jing clearly didn't care for the dog. Besides, the fish tank would also be much easier to view outside the room than inside it. Ye Qinghuan didn't have to wait too long before the fish tank, half the height of a person, was escorted in. Ye Qinghuan's mouth dropped to the floor and was left there, forgotten. It wasn't that Ye Qi Shiji had never seen crystals, but the jewels piled in the fish tank were almost enough to blind him. Yet the fish inside was clearly just a normal small gray carp. You didn't throw your entire money pouch into the into the that fish tank, did you? Ye Qinghuan muttered. But he didn't actually care about the pet's value. But someone like Prince Jing, who was willing to spoil a fish, was a far greater greater rarity than his fish. He'd intentionally tried to show off the pure gold collar on his dog's neck, but it was nothing compared to Prince Jing's fish tank. The cold the gold collar was expensive, yes, but even money might not be able to buy Prince Jing's fish tank and everything inside it. Prince Jing glanced at him with a Are you an idiot? expression on his face. Ye Qinghuan gulped. He suddenly remembered that Prince Jing was rich, but he never really showed it. So what had happened for him to show it off now? Ye Qinghuan didn't want to be embarrassed, so he snapped his fingers. His large black dog bounded over, wagging its tail and pawing at his legs. The young lord immediately regained some of his lost confidence and hugged his dog, who in turn nibbled on his face. Ye Qinghuan smirked at Prince Jing. <clears throat> Prince Jing knew that uh, Ye Shiji was provoking him, but he'd never snapped at his fish or trained him before. He thought the young lord was being childish and wasn't quite expecting anything. Liu and his fish tank was watching Ye Qinghuan and his dog as well. He could tell that he was going on... God, I almost have a heart. I keep... Every time, like, every 30 minutes, I'm like, did I, did I forget to unmute? Did I forget to unmute? Damn it. Oh, okay. Li Yu and his fish tank was watching Ye Qinghuan and his dog as well. He could tell what was going on from a single glance. Were the pets going to compete? Oh, no. <laughs> Li Yu's tail flapped in excitement, and he rushed to the front of the crystal tank. It was time to help his owner earn some more respect. What could a dog do? He'd beat ten of them in a row. You're a fucking fish, you stupid. Oh, man. Prince Jing noticed his fish looked quite eager. Why not give it a try, then? He hesitantly stretched out his hand, palm up. Liu knew that Ye Qinghuan was trustworthy, so he flicked his tail and effortlessly jumped out of the water, landing directly on Prince Jing's palm. Vindicated, Prince Jing held up his fish and softly squeezed his back. Liu wanted to use this opportunity for some intimate contact, but Prince Jing moved faster than him and placed him in a petal-shaped tea bowl that Wang Ji had prepared ahead of time. Ah, uh, he'd failed to steal a kiss. <laughs> Liu flopped unhappily in his teacup. Sob, 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 let me out. I have to finish my mission. Ye Qinghuan gaped in disbelief. Prince Jing was playing with the fish, and the unappealing fish actually jumped out? Not only did he jump, he also jumped into Prince Jing's palm with a deadly accuracy. accuracy. His own dog wouldn't lick the center of his palm if there wasn't food on it, but Prince Jing didn't feed his fish anything. He lost, he lost. Ye Qinghuan felt like he'd lost the meaning of life. <laughs> Wait. He rubbed his face as he remembered something and asked, Chanchi. What's your fish's name? Prince Jing stared at him. My dog's name is Zhang Feng. Zhang Feng. Zhang Feng. There you go. My dog's name is Zhang Feng. Ye Qinghuang grinned, feeling like he'd won this round. He was sure that someone as boring as Prince Jing wouldn't think of giving, <laughs> giving his pet a name. Even if Zhang Feng wasn't as smart as the little carp, he still had Prince Jing beat when it came to names. 
Leo didn't really understand what was going on and wanted to laugh, but before he could giggle, his gaze met Prince Jing's. He instantly had a bad feeling. If Ye Shiji was going to brag about his dog's name, he suddenly remembered Wang Ji calling him Little Thing. Did Prince Jing want to... No, Little Thing was much less di dignified than Zhang Feng. Liu immediately shook his head and wagged his tail, <laughs> trying to demonstrate his disapproval. Prince Jing was indeed thinking about how he really hadn't named his fish yet. There were actually a couple of ways to address him. Most servants called <laughs> him His Highness's Fish, or Master Fish. Wang Ji had called him Master Fish once or twice, but he called him Little Thing most often. Then why not just decide on Little Thing? But Wang Ji was the one who'd come up with that name and Prince Jing didn't know how he felt about that. He'd always called him this fish in his thoughts. <laughs> it was about time to give him a proper name. Prince Jing pressed his lips together, asked for some ink and paper, and gave it some thought. And wrote the word... Xiao. <laughs> so stupid. It's just such a... Oh my god. <clears throat> no. He turned his head to finish to find the fish's burning gaze fixed on him. Prince Jing smiled and added the word fish and tossed the paper to Ye Qinghuan. Why'd you give me this? Ye Qinghuan was holding the calligraphy but hadn't realized what it was yet. Wang Ji who had failed, who had faded into the background, leaped out and confidently explained, Ye Shiji, His Highness wants you to remember that Master Fish's name is Zhao Yu. <laughs> it just means little fish. It like translated that means little fish. So stupid. <laughs> Ye Qinghuan was speechless. What an unbelievably dull and unimaginative name. Xiao Yu? Liu's eyes lit up. This was an excellent name. He used to have the exact same nickname in the modern word world. He quickly spit out a bunch of bubbles, trying to show how much he liked his new name, solidifying that he is the dumbest bitch alive. I can't with this guy. Ye Qinghuan's revival had refreshed the Yu's impression of Ye Shiji from the book. Ye Qinghuan was Prince Jing's cousin and one of the few royal children who was still upright and open-minded. He was sometimes prone to saying annoying things, but that was really his only flaw. And Liu never knew that the real Ye Qinghuan had a dog. It was probably a small detail in the original book, just like the noble consort's master cat. Unfortunately, this detail lost this detail almost cost Liu his life, especially when Ye Qinghuan had someone untie Zhang Feng's uh, Zhang Feng's chain. I said that right for some. <laughs> Zhang Feng started running around wildly, kicking up a cloud of dust. Liu could have heard the ruckus from a mile away. This dog had never seen a fish before, so he ran over excitedly to give him a sniff. <sighs> this dog had really never seen a fish before? Okay. When he was human, Liu wasn't afraid of cats or dogs, but as a fish, he was both he was afraid of both. Dogs might not like to eat fish, but they loved grabbing things in their mouths. Zhang Feng's glistening Yeah, glistening teeth glistening white teeth were much larger than and uh, da, 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 were much larger and sharper than Piaoshu's. What's more, Ye Shiji's dog was quite persistent when it came to things that interested him and insisted on poking his nose into things and smelling them before he stopped. <clears throat> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, okay. I'm just looking at how many pages we have left. I can do it! I don't have any more tea, though. <laughs> right when the dog was about to poke him with his nose, Liu shrieked, Help! The little carp flopped around wildly in panic, 
forgetting he was in a tea bowl and splashing water everywhere. As Zhang Feng dashed forward, Prince Jing moved in front of the teacup, so the dog ran into a human wall, just like Piao Shi did back then. Zhang Feng was an overly enthusiastic dog, so running into something didn't make him mad at all. Since it was his first time in Prince Jing's residence, he was also curious about Prince Jing, as he'd never met him before. While Zhang Feng might not have been afraid of Prince Jing, what? While Zhang Feng might not have been afraid of Prince Jing, however, Ye Qinghua knew what Prince Jing was like when he was angry. Afraid that his dog would get a beating, he hurriedly said, Jiang Qi, don't raise a hand against him. You still have to keep in mind that his owner is... My Zhang Feng is naturally friendly and doesn't bite humor, humans. He didn't bite humans, but could he guarantee that he didn't bite fish? Ye Shiji was quite sure of that himself. Wasn't quite sure of that himself. <clears throat> Very good. Prince Jing glanced at Ye Qinghuan and laughed coldly at him. He didn't end up dealing with Zhang Feng. Instead, he turned around and ordered Wang Ji to pick up Ye Qinghuan and his dog and throw them out together. <laughs> Zhang Feng frightened Liu so badly that his fish's secret plan to steal a kiss from Prince Jing when he didn't expect it had flown right out of the window. But Ye Shiji's arrival had helped him recall a plot line that this young lord was involved in. The system had told him that some plot lines would still happen and others would change. What was going to happen to this one? In the original book, the third prince gained Prince Jing as an ally through Chu Yan Yu, the house of Chong'un, uh, the house of Chong'un as the family of the former empress and Prince Jing's family, had no need to support any other prince, but still indirectly helped the third prince for Prince Jing's sake. <clears throat> After they found out that the house of Chung'un had helped Mu Tianming, Mu Tian Zhao's family held a grudge. At the same time, the country of Jinju, Jinju, the country of Jinju, had sent their princes over to be married. Uh, what? had sent their princes over to be married, and the emperor planned to have her marry Ye Shiji. However, I am so confused. I am so confused. After they found out the house had helped them, and then they got together at the same time, the princess and the princess were married, and the emperor planned to have her marry Yishiji. However, the second prince was afraid that the third prince would also receive support from the country of Jinju, Jinju through this marriage. He plotted to frame Ye Qinghuan. Ye Qinghuan would accidentally kill the princess. Their princess. My bad. There's an extra S at the end of that. <laughs> okay, that tripped me up. What the fuck? He's not gonna kill her. Stop it. With the princess dead, there would be no marriage. Wu Tianzhao didn't care for the country of uh, Jinju. Didn't care if the country of Jinju d ended up becoming an enemy of the emperor or not. What was important was that, according to his plan, the emperor would punish Ye Shiji to soothe diplomatic relationships, and the Duke of Chang'un would plead for mercy. Then Mu Tianzhao just needed to have the ministers on his side speak of justice and insist that Ye Shiji and the Duke of Chang'un had brought shame on the memory of Empress Zhao Hui. The emperor would at least take away their titles and dismiss them from their positions, and the rest of the family would be impacted as well. The second prince had greater power in the country in the court than the third prince did. With the third prince's personality, Wu Tianzhao knew that he would that he would choose to protect himself if pleading for mercy failed. He would then swoop in to win over the Duke of Chang'un. If he could win him over, then the Duke of Chang'un and his family would be loyal to him. If he couldn't win him over, 
then at least he would have to put the third prince at a disadvantage. The second prince was knee-deep in plots and schemes, but the most despicable thing of all was the sixth prince's behavior. When he discovered the scheme by chance, he kept his mouth shut, told the Duke of Chang'un and the third prince nothing, and instead chose to wait to let the tragedy happen. I already don't like the sixth prince. <clears throat> What the hell? However, the Jinju princess wasn't the one who ended up being killed. Instead, it was the emperor's most beloved youngest daughter. The emperor was furious. Yeshiji was executed. The Duke of Chung'un was exiled. And Prince Jing, having been impl implicated as well, was confined to his residence. The sixth prince volunteered to take on some of the prince's bur- the, uh, blah, blah, To take on- some of the emperor's burden, and married the awaiting Jinju princess. Yet the third prince still believed that this... <laughs> All this lore is too much. Yet the third prince still believed the second prince was behind everything and assumed the sixth prince was helping him earn the trust of the, of the country of Jinju. And thus started trusting... Nope. And thus started thrusting the sixth... Nope. Trusting. I was right the first time. God damn it. And thus started trusting the sixth prince even more. When in truth, the sixth prince was secretly already winning over the third prince's people. So he is... Long story short, the sixth prince is the bitch of the, the story. <laughs> All of this happened because of the sixth prince's opportunism. The chance arose for him to drive the wedge between the two princes even deeper, so of course he took it, and managed to eradicate the power of the House of Chung'un while he was at it. The second and third princes were dangerous, but the sixth prince was even more malicious. He helped gain the backing of the House of Chung'un through Prince Jing and, and Chu Yan-Yu, but then he found out that the, prince, that the House of Chung'un was already stretched to its limits, Realizing they were even less likely to, likely to be of use to him than he thought, he decided to cut off the arm of support he personally brought in for the third prince, since he already trusted him completely. At the same time, he could turn the second prince and third princes against each other, thus giving himself an opportunity. What a bitch! The prince had nothing to do with the prince's pow- with the prince's- Prince's, plural, power struggle. But the sixth prince still sacrificed his own younger sister. He knew that the emperor would still show the Duke of Chang'un some mercy over the death of the mere princess uh, from another country. But if it was... Oi. What am I... I read that wrong. He knew that the emperor would still show the Duke of Chang'un some mercy over the death of a mere princess from another country... But if it was their own princess who died, the emperor would no longer need to hold back on account of Empress Xiao Hui. <clears throat> Clearly, the sixth prince had the darkest heart of all. He hid behind the third prince and plotted for both of the second and third princes to defeat each other. Without these manipulations, he would never... He never would have gained the opportunity to fight Prince Jing for the throne and nearly win. In the fight to become the heir, there were countless casualties, the most innocent of which, in the original book, would be the House of Chung'un and Ye Shiji. But now, a turning point had presented itself. Since Prince Jing didn't like Chu Yan Yu, it would be immensely difficult for the third prince to re receive help from the ha would to receive help from the House of Chung'un. Would the second prince still plot to frame Ye Shiji? Of course the second prince hadn't put that plan into motion. Then... Whoa, I read that so wrong. If the second prince hadn't put that plan into motion, then the sixth prince's plan wouldn't have kicked off either, yet either. Liu had very little contact with Ye Shiji. The young lord might be a bit irritating, but... He was one of Prince Jing's few friends and a direct relative. To die in the contest for power, as innocent as he was, 
In the original book, the sixth prince failed to win the position of heir, and even though Chu Yanyu begged for his mercy, Prince Jing would still sacrifice the sixth prince to Ye Qinghuan's family. It was clear that he was incredibly regretful. Hmm. If Ye Shi's plotline still exists, Li Yu thought, I should help as much as I can. But he was just a fish. What he could what could he do? Ye Shi came to Prince Jing's residence more often than anyone else did, but it still wasn't very often. Liu could only turn into a human for an hour a day, so he might not be able to run into Ye Shi Ji. And even if he did, an hour wasn't enough time to persuade Ye Shi Ji to believe him. Prince Jing was still the one Liu had the most contact with, so he had to go through Prince Jing. Just as he was thinking about how he was going to go about it, the fish scamming system suddenly interrupted. User, you've met. Ugh. User, you've met the prerequisites for the side quest, impenetrable defense. Would you like to begin? What side quest? said Liu. How come I can activate it even though I haven't done anything? It activates when the user is willing to save cannon fodder characters from the book without anything in return. Aww. Liu laughed. So Yeshiji was also, ahem, <clears throat> cannon fodder. But with Yeshiji's quality, he was probably still the most eye-catching eye cannon fodder. <clears throat> it would be best if the side quest was considered complicated after people were saved. That was wrong. It would it would be best if the side quest was considered complete after people were saved. If it was anything like Clear Bright Pearl, he'd lose his mind. Liu still had to worry over the intimate contact mission, though. He asked cautiously, What's this mission exactly? And the rewards? Let's hear it. The system guided Liu to look at the impenetrable defense mission. The mission was quite detailed. As long as he protected the person he wanted to save in the given period of time and prevented their death, the side quest would be completed. It was right in line with what he wanted to do, and he liked the title, Impenetrable, Impenetrable Defense. It meant that as long as he was able to protect and guard the person well, he was like a metal wall. And the rewards? Liu asked. The user can choose from these rewards once the mission is completed. The system started to list them off mechanically. Liu didn't really listen. What? Liu didn't really want to listen. Fine, I'll see what they are when the mission is complete, completed then. The fish scamming system's rewards were getting more and more fantastical. Well, even if there was no mission, he would still help Yeshiji. The reward wasn't really important. Liu's plan was to... Liu's plan was to deliver the letter to Yeshiji that allowed the outlined the second prince's plan to frame him. Even if Ye Qinghuan didn't believe the letter, the House of Chun might at least be alerted, and if they were somewhat already prepared, then it would be difficult for the second prince to harm him. <clears throat> Since Liu had already taken... Nope, that was wrong. Since Liu already had the skill that let him change into a human. He didn't have to worry about how he was going to write, but it wasn't until he was actually faced with writing the letter that he suddenly realized, in ancient times, people wrote in traditional characters. Liu could guess and read some traditional characters, but he wouldn't be able to write an entire letter with them. He'd suddenly become illiterate. Still, it wouldn't stop him. Since he could mostly read traditional characters, he just had to find a book with lots of words and copy it. Hello, Hilarious. Welcome. Um, we are actually, I literally have like one page left and then we're going to end here. <laughs> so you are kind of came on a bad time, but it's still a good time. Uh, copy it. Right. There weren't many books in Prince Jing's bedroom, but there was a large study room that Liu hadn't been to yet. When Prince Jing planned to go to the study, Liu jumped into his palm and grabbed onto his fingers, refusing to get off. Prince Jing glanced at him fondly, 
What in the world should I do with you? He thought. He. <laughs> the fish had been getting bolder and bolder ever since it was given the name. Oh well, Prince Jing might grumble, but he didn't hesitate at all to grab the flower petal tea bowl that the little carp often stayed in. This is the third time I've shown up to the end of the ship. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's so sad. R.A.P. <laughs> when he got to the study, Prince Jing placed the fish on the side as usual. Prince Jing placed the fish on the side as usual and brought over a set of books to read at the desk. The little carp was always very quiet when Prince Jing read in his own room, but this time, instead of being obediently silent as usual, <laughs> Xiao Yu kept trying to stretch his head towards the book he was reading and flapped his tail vigorously. The angle's off, I can't see. Did Xiao Yu want to play again? Prince Jing was pretty easy going with his fish, so he smiled and moved the tea bowl closer to him. Wang Ji had been informed that the fish was coming to the study, so he laid out a couple of thick, water absorbent blankets on the table in advance liu could finally see the book as he watched he took note of as many characters as he could what as he watched he took whoa as he watched he took note of as many characters as he could that he might use while writing the letter he planned to practice writing the characters when no one else was around Prince Jing no noticed while reading that Xiao Yu's head was moving up and down <laughs> consistently. Hmm. He suddenly had a feeling that the fish could read. No, he definitely saw it wrong, right? Prince Jing put his book down and rubbed the spot between his eyebrows. He noticed that he, as he put the book down, the little carp slowly tipped forward on his tea bowl until he fell onto the page with a soft poof. Ah. Uh thought Prince Jing. So he fell asleep. Liu despair, d dis despaired. How come I fell asleep? I am just as confused as you. That is the end of the chapter. That is the end of the chapter and that is the end of the stream because my voice is completely shot now. We have reached uh, oh, about an hour and a half. That Not an hour and a half. Two hours and a half. That's like an hour longer than I usually go. That's crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> but um, we'll continue on Monday. On to chapter 24 called Even the Best Laid Plans. I do not know what that means. I do not know what that means, but we will find out. My voice is dead. It kind of hurts quite a bit. <laughs> so I am going to make a quick outro. Make a quick outro. Do a quick outro and skedaddle. <clears throat> Ouch. <laughs> oh, but this book is so fun. These chapters, these couple of chapters were so fucking fun. I had so much fun. I hope you had fun too. Um, If you didn't catch the beginning of this stream, or, you know, if you want to catch up, I always upload these onto YouTube, and I'm... There's a couple of VODs still up on Twitch. So, yeah, if you want to catch up, you can do that. It's so fun. It's such a fun time. I love this stupid book, this stupid fish. He's so stupid, but I love him. <laughs> well, yeah, I will see you on Monday at 6 p.m. Hopefully, I don't know what my sleep schedule is doing right now. But hopefully at 6 p.m. Mm, PDT. I'll see you then. Have a nice day, night, whatever it is for you. And...